today's video, we are going to be doing a deep dive into our analogs. Again, you guys have been eating these up, and today's video is dedicated fully to them. Not only will we be taking a look at the summer, the fall, and the winter analogs, both temperature and precipitation, we're also going to be breaking it down month by month, June through February, so that's the summer, fall, and winter, and as a bonus, we're going to throw in March of uh, those analogs as well to see what we might expect for that kind of final month of winter into spring. So we're we'll going to be taking a look at all of that today. Be sure to check out the trilogy maps in the description and pinned comment down below, guys. They are the highest definition, most customizable maps anywhere on the internet. And we have a crazy 50% off discount, including our, uh, well, not including actually our direct discount code that gives you 33% off on top of that. So if you put in the discount code direct, you get that 33% off on top of the 50%, which brings you to a crazy total of discounts. Let's just break this down. And we can see that this is going to be for our analogs of June. And as you can see, we would expect a little bit of a southeast ridge here, as well as the northwest being a little bit warmer. Has not been this way, by the way. And then colder up there for the northeast and upper midwest. The northeast has been cold here, but not the upper midwest. So this kind of gives you some insight into the, the changes that we would expect according to these analogs. And not every single one of these is going to be completely on point. So that is another thing to also set your expectations on is that it might not be uh, precisely, obviously, what we would expect. But this is giving us some insight. Now, as we take a look at July, we can expect, if this goes according to plan, much cooler conditions moving in, even than what we've been seeing. Uh, according to a lot of these years, and I think 2009 in particular out of these analogs had a very, very cold July. And as you can see, that kind of positive PNA look, that stands for Pacific North American Oscillation. And when this is warm, that's a positive PNA. And when it's cold out here, it's a, it's a negative PNA. But this really causes a lot of this cold to happen in the east when we see this. All of the cold has to move around this area and it dives down into the east like we see there. And that is overall what we would expect for July. August is very, very on par. Uh, what we saw in a lot of these years is that the warming was a lot less significant there in the northwest. We saw a little bit of warmth there in New England, perhaps, over the course of those four years. But the majority here is cold, as you can see. This would be a very early start to fall for a lot of folks here in August if we saw this happening this way. By the time we take a look at September here, or actually better yet, this is the June through August time frame. So to recap, this is June, July, August, the entirety of meteorological summer. This is, would be the result significantly warmer than normal conditions here in the Northwest. Again, indicative of a positive PNA. And then that significant cooling as a result of that. That is the trend there for summertime. As we move into the precipitation here real quickly, we're not going to go month by month on this because it is very similar month to month. But we do expect a little bit of some drier conditions across the Gulf Coast. I think that I want to say this is mostly because they had quieter hurricane seasons those years. I have evidence to suggest that that might be one of the differences this year, uh, particularly this year, uh, as all of these analogs that I use, they all had really quiet hurricane seasons, but they also had El Ninos, which typically causes low normal hurricane season. We also have an El Nino this year, but the main difference is that these years had very cold Atlantic conditions, below normal conditions in the Atlantic sea surface temperatures. And this year we are at astronomically historical levels of warmth in the Atlantic. It's not even close. Where we're at right now in June, we are looking at the warmest conditions ever uh, in the Atlantic, and it's not even close, and it looks to continue rising. So that leaves you wondering, you know, will we have a quiet hurricane season this year? Typically, El Ninos do bring quieter hurricane seasons, but typically we don't see historically warm Atlantic conditions. So that is why it's quieter there. But as you can see, outside of this area here, the east is very active, as you can see, for a majority of these areas in the summertime. So we can anticipate a lot of storminess over the course of this summer. Now, as we take a look here at September, we can see that this was actually a little bit of a warmer month for a lot of these years. And we saw a lot of warming happening out west, the upper Midwest here, and even a little bit of the deeper south here, we saw some drier conditions as well. 
Uh, and then it's mostly the cooler conditions were over this kind of central United States area, south central. This was actually one of the warmer months of the year uh, in a lot of these areas. So perhaps we see a little bit of like uh, a, a just like a warmer September time frame there after August is said and done. October, though, we start to see fall moving in in a huge way here. We see a little bit of warmth along that kind of southeast coast into the Gulf Coast there, a little bit of a southeast ridge, but overall that cold is heading deep into the central and eastern United States. By November, we would anticipate to see these cooler conditions moving further and further south and east and basically solidifying a colder fall overall for most of these areas. We also see a significant warming trend here out west, again, indicative of a positive PNA look, which would again encourage that colder air into the east like we see here. Uh, and to recap, here's the September through November time frame here overall. So we see significantly below normal temperatures for a lot of these eastern United States regions for a three-month period. And we do see this positive PNA out west again, similar to the summer. Um, very, very similar. So this was the summertime here. Um, so we saw significantly below normal temperatures there. And then here was the fall time. I messed that one up. Summertime, fall time. Okay, now the precipitation for the fall time, we can see that things kind of make up for what happened over the course of the summer. We see a lot more activity here across the southeast. We saw significant amounts of nor'easters and southern sliders moving through. Obviously not snowfall here in the south for September through November, but we did see very, very wet conditions. We saw frequent storms moving through this area over the course of the fall time. Now, as we move into the wintertime, here is December, and as you can see, we saw a weird area of warming here across the upper Midwest as well as New England, but outside of that, uh, it looks like we had a very strong positive PNA, which has been the trend here, as you've probably noticed, and then significant cold air moving in as a result of that, just like we saw over the course of the summer and the fall. There's just like a couple areas in there where we just miss it for some reason and we get warmer conditions. I'm unsure as to why that is, but that is just what happened. So uh, I don't know if we can expect that to occur necessarily, but what we can expect to potentially occur is that positive PNA pattern, which would encourage cold in the east. Now, January, you notice the year's change is because we obviously moved from December to January, which is crossing of a year. So we have to advance the year here to stick with the same analog season. Uh, as you can see, this positive PNA expanded, grew, and become the most significant feature here by far. And we saw, again, significant and expanding of this cold in the east becoming so much more significant. And January of these years was particularly frigid. February here, uh, we also we saw even more frigid conditions, actually. Um, as you can see, this adjusts, this bar down here adjusts for... Uh, the temperatures that were at play and as you can see this goes as far down as 9 degrees to 10 degrees below normal over a 30-day period or in this case 28-day period for February uh, and we saw nearly 9 to 10 degrees below normal over that period here for a lot of the Ohio Valley insane statistics especially since this is three separate years put together uh, so that is a strong analog here to suggest significantly below normal temperatures would be moving in for February uh, if these analogs were completely correct. Now, for March, as we're throwing this in as a bonus, we can see we saw a little bit of warming. But the thing here is it's near normal for the east. And even this would be a continuation of winter, I think. We don't see significantly above normal temperatures anywhere in the east. And I think this would lead towards more snow, more cold for March as well in the upcoming winter. Uh, and we can see that there is a lot of warmth out west again, indicating that positive PNA at play. So with all of that being said, here would be the entirety of the winter. As you can see, far below normal temperatures in the east, far above normal temperatures in the west, Positive PNA pattern for the third season in a row, summer, fall, and winter, if these analogs are correct. The precipitation, as well, to make matters even more significant, is we see this above average area along the eastern seaboard, indicating strong nor'easters being a big factor 
leading towards above normal snowfall, especially when you combine this with the fact that we're going to have those significantly below normal temperatures. All of this would lead you to believe that we are in store for a cold and snowy winter, a very crisp fall, and a historically cold summer perhaps, combined with the historically warm Atlantic, which would lead you to believe there's going to be a very active hurricane season. I can't think of a more extreme looking outlook ahead uh, for every single season. It's very interesting. Uh, and honestly, I can't wait to make videos all year for you guys on all of these topics. So be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Also, be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.